Investing can take a psychological hit on people. Remember the COVID-19 crash? Yes, the S&P 500 lost over one third of its value in a little over a month. Or we could go back to Black Monday, October 19th, 1987, where the Dow lost over 20% in a single day. Still to this day, the largest single day drop in recorded history. Now try to go convince people to invest in the stock market. Sure, you have some upside, actually quite a bit of upside, but then you have to deal with these sorts of crashes that come and can wipe you away psychologically. The fact of the matter is, is that a lot of people just take this as a given. This is just something you have to deal with. And the most you can do is just cry about it in the corner while taking in the reality that investing is just risky and this is just part of the process. And part of the process it is. We can't expect these sorts of events to happen every now and then. You know who also thinks this? Yeah, Warren Buffett. He actually wrote this in his 2023 investor letter. He says, speed of communication and the wonders of technology facilitate instant worldwide paralysis. And we have come a long way since smoke signals. Such instant panics won't happen often, but they will happen. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of troopers out there that will stay with their stock program through thick and thin, no matter what happens in the search for higher expected returns. But if one of your goals is to help mitigate the impact of these fast and large crashes, then tail hedging might be for you. If this is your first time watching this channel, I wanna welcome you, Alpha Architects, mission is to empower investors through education and that's what i'm hoping to do here today and today we're going to talk about tail hedging now in order to understand tail hedging there's no way about it you have to understand the basics of options and if you don't know anything about options well no need to worry i actually have a video where i go through the basics of options and it's super important you understand this in order to really grasp what tail hedging is all about and in that video the last topic we hit on was convexity and think about convexity as non-linear payoffs see as options move from out of the money to in the money the returns that follow are not linear but move in a non-linear fashion and provide accelerating payoffs now this is the key to tell hedging and tell hedging can be done in various different manners but one of the most well known and one of the most common ways to do this is to purchase out of the money put options within buying put options there are three things that investors need to consider in order to form a robust tell hedging strategy so the first thing is the strike price consider what strike should i choose in order to tell hedge now usually the further out of the money a strike price is the larger the convexity tends to be this usually occurs because the more far out of the money the put option is the less likely it is to pay off we don't really expect these crashes to happen and if we really choose a really far out of the money option in case it does pay off it's gonna pay off big again because it's so unlikely that this would happen the stock market would have to move a magnitude lower for a really far out of the money put option to pay off. So one of the first things to consider when trying to tell hedge is how far out of the money should I go? If you go too far out of the money, you still may have a fast and hard crash, but your option value might have not moved as much because you're just too far out of the money. And so really that option might just expire worthless. Now it's important to understand that just because the option doesn't go in the money, it doesn't mean that you haven't realized some gains. As long as your underlying drops, the option value should capture some of that gain. But again, you really have to ask yourself, where should I place my put? Now, if you go closer to at the money, you might actually have an option that goes in the money because the underlying has dropped. But again, that option lacks convexity. Therefore, you would need to buy more of it in order to have a similar payoff to something that is more out of the money and ends up in the money. Overall, given the same budget for tail hedging, if you go closer to at the money, your returns might be a little bit muted since again, you're not targeting this convexity. The second thing to consider would be time to expiration. The shorter the time to expiration, the greater the convexity. This should also make intuitive sense. Let's say you target the same strike price, 
but with two different expiration dates. It would make sense then for the shorter dated put to give you a larger payoff in case the underlying drops. Again, because it's much more unlikely for something to happen during a shorter period of time. So the obvious question would be what expiration date should I target? Even though short dated options might help you with convexity, they could also hurt you if you get unlucky. This introduces yet another issue with tail hedging, and that is path dependency, where the timing of decisions affects the investment results. See, by the mere fact of introducing time into the equation, we have opened a can of worms, as one now needs to decide when to monetize or roll over these puts. But the timing is key. Here's Alpha Architect CIO Jack Vogel explaining this a little bit more. The monetization of protective puts is a very difficult decision to make. So let's take the example of an investor who purchased these protective put options at some point in early 2020, before the March 2020 COVID drawdown. So overall, this investor was directionally correct in that they purchased these protective put options prior to the drawdown. So on one hand, we might have an investor who sold these protective put options near the bottom of March of 2020, and that investor would have realized good returns. Alternatively, another investor might have been scared near the bottom and not monetize these protective puts. This investor would probably have lower returns than the investor who sold near the bottom. So overall, the path and the monetization process will matter, and it really is a very difficult decision to make. This is a much larger issue if you target short dated options, because again, this path dependency really gets magnified the more you have to rebalance or roll over puts. Lastly, let's talk about vol. The higher the volatility spike, the higher the option value. This is what we refer to as Vega, and Vega is the change in an options value for a change in the underlying volatility. For long options, a spike in volatility should help your option price and a decrease in volatility should hurt your option price, all things held equal. Now, this might not make sense right off the bat, but think about it. If an underlying gains volatility, that means it's moving more, so to speak. If it's moving more, the option buyer technically has a greater chance of landing in the money because, well, it's moving more. This introduces yet another dilemma. During drawdowns, volatility spikes, which is good if you bought an option before this volatility occurred. But if you need to purchase or rollover puts in the middle of a drawdown, tail hedging becomes much more expensive. Not to mention that in general, volatility tends to be mean reverting, so you might be purchasing puts at the bottom. As you can tell, tail hedging might not be as easy as you think. First of all, it's a very expensive endeavor. Think about it, most of the time you pay a premium for these put options and the premium simply disappears. You could avoid this somewhat if you roll over your puts, but the idea is still there. This is a huge return drag, a return drag that many investors would like to avoid and with good reason. Secondly, as you can tell by now, buying, selling, rolling over puts can be a highly intellectual exercise. But that is tail hedging for you, a nice idea that could reduce portfolio level risk but that needs very careful implementation. That's it for today. If you liked this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, share with a friend, do all those good things. If you want more content like this, you could go to alphaarchitect.com slash subscribe and make sure to subscribe to our blog. We have tons of blog posts about tons of different topics and ideas. So if you want to dive deeper into tail hedging, I'm gonna leave a couple blog posts that you can check out. Make sure to check that out in the description. Lastly, if you haven't already, go ahead and follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Coffee Hour with Jose. I'll see you next time.